welcome back to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 76, and if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by. Please remember to click the subscribe button down below. Uh, that's that little red button, and if you click the little bell next to it, you will get notifications whenever I post a video, which is normally on Saturday mornings. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back each week and joining our knitting and crochet group. Um, I'm getting more into the crochet, so I am trying to balance things a little bit as I learn. Um, I've been doing a lot of knitting and crocheting this week. I, I looked at some of the stuff I've gotten done, and I'm not sure how I did it. Um, anyway, yeah, I've got not one, but two finished objects and some progress on some other things. So let's get started. First off, I finished... The Keeping you, Keeping you in Stitches Shawl. This is a pattern that I designed. It is available on Ravelry. Um, so it is completed and it's been blocked. And let me make sure I'm showing you the right side. Um, here is my progress keeper where I was last week. And I knitted this far, which is about seven inches but this is at the widest point of the shawl so let me roll back and show it to you it starts here this is normally a four colored shawl but i did it in one solid color and this was knit with a little heavier uh, yarn than the pattern originally called for uh, the original pattern is for a fingering weight, and I believe it was a size 3 or 4 needle. I think it's a size 4 needle. Um, this was knit in a sport weight, and I knit it with a uh, size 6. So I will get up a little closer so you can see the different stitches. So it starts here. And that goes to this. And it goes to some little dots. And then I have some other lace work. And this is very, very basic lace work. So if you want a project where you're going to learn several lace stitches, but you don't do a whole lot of the lace stitches, um, it's a good one to practice with because it gives you a little bit of experience without overwhelming you with lace. So I finished that one, and this I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it for myself or if it's going to become a Christmas present, so I'm not real sure yet. Um, but anyway, that's project number one. Project number two, I finished my Drakenfells, and I knit a lot on this this week. Uh, you can see here is my progress keeper from last week, and I knit about eight inches on it, and this particular shawl is over 200 stitches across at the bottom point so let me roll back i haven't even this just came off of the blocking um so i have not even woven the ends to it yet and i put a picture of this up on facebook and on instagram and you can actually well even the other one you can do this but you can see through this a little bit um and i was asked by kathy what size needles did i use with this this is fingering weight, which normally is like a three or a four, but they the pattern actually calls for a size six. So it really, really blocked out even more so than the other Drakenfels that I've made, uh, which was done with a little bit heavier yarn. But this purple here is alpaca. It is so extremely soft. And then the other two colors that are striped through here, um, kind of a lavendery purple, and then there's a gray with like different purple speckles in it. Those are from, um, I believe it was Knit Picks. Those are Hawthorne yarns. So anyway, let me roll back and show you that one. So it starts at this end and it goes across. Like I said, this really, really blocked out really big. Um, in fact, I, I block in, in my laundry room, and I usually, like, tack it up to my wire shelving that's in my laundry room. 
I didn't have shelves wide enough for this because the wingspan on this is probably about six, maybe six and a half feet all the way across. So yeah, this is going to be a nice shawl. It will more than fit across this way, but it's deep enough. I mean, it's a really deep shawl the way it opened up. I will be able to wear this like around my shoulders um, with no problem at all. It will probably hang all the way down my back. So as you can see at its deepest section, it's oh probably about two feet deep. So um, yeah, I really like this and I, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. And this one I am keeping for myself. So um, yeah, so those are my two finished objects. Then I played a little bit more with the polymer clay. Now I was um, chatting back and forth, um, Crochet by Starlight, who has a podcast if you want to check her out. Um, she happened to mention that she and her son, I believe, actually make handles for the uh, crochet hooks out of polymer clay, out of the old metal ones. And I thought, I've got some old metal crochet hooks. I don't even remember where they came from. I don't know that I bought them because I never was... Other than granny squares, I never really had done a whole lot of crocheting. Um, however, I had some, some I think came from kits over the years, and I had some odd polymer clay. Um, I ordered it from eBay, which is why I didn't quite know what to do to dry it out. So all of you that responded this week and told me that I needed to bake that, thank you so much because um, I didn't have instructions with what to do with it. And... If, well, put it this way, if there were instructions, they were in Chinese, which I don't read. So, yeah, I was at a total loss. So those of you who sent me little messages in the comments and told me what to do, thank you. So I want to show you what I got. This is definitely on the amateur side, but I had fun doing it. I took some of the kind of odd colors that I knew I wouldn't use for anything. So I did this. You know what I just realized what I did do, though? I covered over the size of the hook. Oh dear. Oh well. I'll have to figure that one out. But um, I put a handle on this one. And every single one of them I covered over the size of the of the hook. You know, right in the middle where it tells you. But that wasn't that wasn't the smartest of things I've done. But anyway, then I have this one. It's just like, well, like I said, these are very amateurish. And then I had these odd color combinations that didn't work out. So they kind of got blobbed together. So we're calling it a marbled effect. So, yeah, there's this one. It's more like really tacky, but you know, it's it's marbled. It makes it sound makes it sound better. And then we have this one. This is like totally psychedelic, if you know what I mean. It's yeah. It's it's bright. It it looks like a lava lamp, doesn't it? Ah. Oh, oh well. Anyway, then I started making a couple other little things. I made a little teacup with tea inside. It looks more like coffee or hot chocolate. Hot chocolate will work. I like the smell of coffee. I can't stand the taste of it. But anyway, there's my little teacup. And then I made a croissant. And this was supposed to be a chocolate eclair. It didn't. It, it looks like some kind of a bun or something. I don't know. It didn't turn out real great. Then I made this, which was supposed to be a cinnamon roll. It looks more like one of those little um, hostess ho-hos. You know, the little devil's food thing with the cream inside. That's kind of what it looks like. And then I, I, I started looking at everything I've made, all the food that I am not supposed to be eating on my diet. I did not make any fruits or vegetables. Hmm. But, of course, who wants to have a progress tree for... A progress creeper, a progress keeper that looks like a, a piece of broccoli hanging on your, on your work, you know. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'd rather have food that I can't have. Anyway, little food, little calories. But then I made a bunch of these little beads. They're just pink and, yeah, they're not showing up real well, just pink and purple. And I made like six of them, so they're just going to be stitch markers. Um... And then I tried, I tried a little rabbit. Animals are not my thing. I need to stick to the food I'm not supposed to eat. Look at this. There's my rabbit. He's scary. And then I tried to give him a pom-pom tail, and that just doesn't look good. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he's got these little black eyes because the little white dots fell off. <laughs> so, he's my creepy rabbit. But anyway, uh, yeah, I should stick to making food. I seem to be doing better at that. But that's been my playing with the polymer clay this week. Um, so now let me get to the works in progress that I've got going on. I have some crochet. And I've gotten through one more full repeat of the colors, and then I started started into a second repeat. Um, here is my progress keeper. You can see it right here. There's my progress keeper from last week. So I got these rows knit. And I'm being real careful because I'm, I'm halfway through this row, so I don't want to lose that stitch there and have it unravel. But let me hold it up. This is narrow because it's just going to be a little throw for the back of a chair. So it's about two feet across. So kind of more like a little lap rope or lap, lap blanket, I guess, is kind of more what this is going to be. So, and this, this is, yeah, there you can see the colors better. So it's a brown and a maroon, but when I hold it back here, you can't see the maroon as well. So kind of fall colors because my, my bedroom downstairs, I have a quilt that I made a few years ago. Um, it's a king size. We have a king size bed. So we have a quilt that is literally nine feet square. I haven't quilted since I did that. Um, I got a little burned out with quilting after quilting a nine foot square quilt, but oh well. But anyway, it is all in fall color. So our bedroom's done in that color. Then I worked a little bit on my cozy memory blanket and I finished four square well yeah four squares started a fifth one I did this square here and then I did this one this is left over from Drakenfels and I did another yellow one that's not the same yellow as the first one I showed you and then here's another one here and then I'm working on a black square right now so I will hold this up for you. For those of you who haven't been watching for a while, I had this much bigger and changed direction of where I wanted the miters and ripped the whole thing out. So it's smaller than it used to be, but it is across here. It's probably about two and a half, three feet square, or two and a half or three feet by maybe a foot and a half tall. And I have lots of leftover yarn. Plus I have a lot of yarn from a um, yarn advent calendar that I did over Christmas where I had a whole bunch of these little um, mini skeins that came in. Um, and I ordered that from Paula on eBay. Um, and yeah, so this is a lot of her yarns that she sent me. So I hadn't worked on this for a while, and by the time I finished all these projects, I was like, I just want something small and feel like I can accomplish something. So, yeah, this is like my comfort zone I go back to because it's, it's mindless. I can knit it in the car, and it takes me about 40 minutes to do one square because they're only about maybe two and a half by two and a half inches. So um, they're pretty easy, and I actually am knitting them using some double-pointed needles. These are like six inch double pointed needles and I just put um, point protectors on the end because I don't want great big needles sticking out, poking my husband in the car. So when I'm knitting and I'm using those, I just use the little needles. Then I started, well, I, I didn't start a new project. This is a project, if you've been with me since the beginning, you will remember this one. I started a, what was called the Barton Cardigan and then I got frustrated with it and I put it away and finally I'm determined to finish this. It's a, it is a cardigan sweater. It's absolutely gorgeous, but it's a pattern where it literally has cables all the way around. It takes five charts. You have a chart for your front left for your front, right? There's a gusset on each side and the back. And then when you get into the sleeves, there's more gussets. So I'm going to show you a picture before I show you what it is. It came out of a book called Knitting Plus, and I got this as a used book off of um, Amazon. It is by Lisa Schroyer. There is her name. 
and it's called Knitting Plus because these are all patterns for plus size women, which I am, but we're working on that. So this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can get this without the glare. There we go. That's still got some glare. But you can see all of the cables. This is just, this is not a pattern that you can like be watching a whole lot on TV. You've got to really be concentrating what you're doing. Here's what the back of it looks like. So, I mean, it is, it is really pretty. The one thing I am going to change on it though, it has three quarter length sleeves and I want full sleeve. If I'm going to wear a cardigan, I want it to have full sleeves all the way around. So here's the neck where you can see some more of the cables. So now I'll show you what mine looks like. Mine is being knit out of this yarn, which has no name. I bought this at Peter Patches, which is up in Cranston, Rhode Island. It is basically a warehouse where he has a lot of mill ends uh, because there's a lot of mills in the area. And he sells really cheap yarns um, at really reasonably priced prices. I think when I bought this yarn and I bought a bunch of other, it was like 100% wool was two, you had to buy two pound lots and it was $8 per pound or $8 for two pounds, something like that. It was, it was like ridiculously priced, but this is a wool blend. It's what you would consider rustic because it's, it's not scratchy, scratchy, but it's not like real soft. You wouldn't want this like right against your skin, but it'll be fine for a cardigan. Um, it does have a definite burlapy type of odor, and with working with it, it almost it almost leaves a waxy feel in your hand, not like lanolin. I mean, because that was my first thought was, is it lanolin that I'm feeling? But it's not. This is a definite. I don't. I don't know what it is. I'm I'm hoping it all comes out when I wash it, because it it just it leaves your hands feeling kind of strange with knitting it, but. Let me show you what it looks like. Like I said, I have only knit one time around since I picked this back up. But here's the front. Let me do this so I don't have the needle or have the stitches drop off. Here is the front, and it is steep. So you actually knit it in the round, and then this is the center part where your buttons will go. And steaking, what it does is it allows you to knit a tube, so you're basically knitting all the way around. And then when you finish, you are going to cut right down through the center of this, and that opens up to become the cardigan. And then these stitches, um, you fold back and seam, and that becomes your edge. Um, I know most of you are thinking, is it going to unravel when you cut it? No, it actually doesn't, um, because your stitches run this direction and you're cutting this way. It honestly doesn't, although to be... To be perfectly frank, I have done steaking before. I actually run it up on a sewing machine before I cut it. I just feel a little bit safer that way, even though I've been told it doesn't unravel and it's not supposed to and everything, and it hasn't on me. I always have just run it on a sewing machine just as a precaution. So I usually run up one side, down the other, and then I cut between the two seams, and I don't have to worry about it unraveling ever. So anyway... Here is the front. So like I said, this, this word is plain where this, where the progress keeper is. This is the section that will be steep. It's just 10 stitches of stockinette. And then it just keeps going and going. But here it is. These are the cables that go all the way around. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's, it's just repeat after repeat, a repeat of cables. Um, but like I said, there is a back there. I've got stitch markers in here because that's marking where the front and the gussets and the back are on this. So anyway, that's what it looks like. And I really do want to finish this. Um, I've got a long ways to go because I've only got about eight inches so far, but, um, it is a gorgeous sweater. And if you look in Ravelry, you can see pictures of other people's finished ones and it's really, really pretty. So I do want to finish this. Um, so this is my, this is my stress. If I want to be stressed, this is my stress knitting. 
um, my cozy memory blanket is my de-stress knitting. <laughs> so we have that. Those are my works in progress. Now we're going to talk about the knit along that we have going on over in our Ravelry group under Katrina's Creations, and there is a link to it down below. Uh, we have a knit along going right now for the Katrina's Kerchief Cow, which is a pattern that I just just put together a couple weeks ago. Uh, you can knit it in whatever you would like to knit it in. I did it in cotton, uh, but you are more than welcome to do it in wool or whatever, acrylic, whatever you want to knit it in. Uh, some of the people are using, um, I love this cotton from Hobby Lobby. It doesn't, like I said, you can knit it in whatever you'd like. It is a DK weight yarn, um, but you could do it probably in worsted. You might take the needle size up just a little teeny bit, but um, yeah. Anyway, it is a $2 pattern over in Ravelry, and again, the links are down below. And the knit along started last week, and it's going to run until May 12th, and that's when I will close the thread. And finished objects um, will be entered for a giveaway, and the prize for the giveaway is going to be this. This is Queensland Urulu, Urulu, yeah, Uluru, um, which is a an area in Australia. I looked it up. Um, Anyway, this is, it is an acrylic yarn. It's 55, well, it's part acrylic. It's a 55% cotton, 26% acrylic, 19% polyester. But it's just really pretty. It has, um, if you can see it or not, I'm going to put my hand. It's got a nice halo, so you can see a little bit of fuzzies. It's kind of between a fingering weight and a lace weight yarn. There's 410 yards or 375 meters. And they recommend a size, a U.S. Uh, 3 to an 8. So depending on how loose you want it. Uh, but a 3 is usually for fingering weight. So anyway, I would say this is probably a fingering weight yarn. So if you can see that it's got such a pretty kind of fuzzy halo. I have used this yarn before in a different color. I actually made a hitchhiker scarf for my daughter-in-law in this yarn. And I've used this yarn and combi combined it with a solid before. Um, the yarn I had had a lot of green in it, and I actually made a, a shawl that I combined kind of with a chartreuse. So I have used this yarn several times before. So it can be used by itself, or it can be combined with another just to add a little texture and interest. So this is the giveaway prize. Again, it is Uluru Queensland yarn. So, um, yes, and that will be for finished objects. So if you are interested, just do the pattern and enter it in the, in the thread in the Ravelry group. Uh, you're also welcome to chat in it. There's no prizes for the chattering part. We're just chatting back and forth. And it's been fun because some of you have told us, you know, what yarn you're using and, you know, what colors you're using and just talking back and forth and, and showing progress and stuff. So we're having a lot of fun over on there. So if you want, you can enter into the knit along. Now our yarn giveaway from last week, we still have not had our winner come forward. Uh, so she has one more week. I will be filming next Thursday. So um, I'll put the date down on what that date is. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, but when I film, if she still has not come forward at that point, I will draw another winner. So if you entered into the yarn giveaway from last week, uh, you still have a chance. I've saved everybody's names and everybody's entries, and we will go from there. But the winner was Waynette Crenshaw, so um, you have one more week. Otherwise, I will be redrawing for another winner. So, but some of you, the very first week, one of the things you had to do was ask me a question. So a lot of the questions, as time went on, I just responded right in the comments. But um, some of them that I thought would be especially interesting, I put into the um, into the, the question pool that I'm going to get answer right now. So, question number one: If I was not on a budget, what is my favorite yarn? Uh, or blend. My favorite to knit with is is alpaca. It's really soft and it's I can afford that. However, 
I would love to try, and I'm not going to because I think it runs like $100 an ounce or something, and that is, it's Vicuña. It's like one of the softest fibers that's out there. It's very, very rare, um, and it runs, I think, I think I saw it priced. There's another one, it's a Vicuña, and there's an Akiviet. Those are, they are, they are sort of like alpacas, but they're even softer. So, um, those would be fun to try, but they're not even in my budget. Uh, the next question was, how long have I been knitting? I have been a knitter for 23 years. Um, have I ever knit with dog hair? No, I try to avoid wearing dog hair, although we have a little dog, so I wear her hair even without knitting it. Um, my mother has a Sheltie, which is kind of like a little miniature collie, and their dog, of course, has more hair. Like, my dog has fur, so I couldn't really spin fur. I could spin my mother's dog because it's hair. There's a difference. Um, and I actually offered one time, I said, Mom, if you would like me to spin the dog's hair, I can spin it, and you can knit it up to whatever you like. I spend more time getting dog hair off of me. I really don't want to wear it. Um, there is such a thing that you can buy or have your hair, your dog hair spun. Um, there used to be some called wolf spun, and it was from dogs. So, um, but no, I've never knit with dog hair. Um, the easiest beginner video or book to make socks with. That one, I would say just go through a bunch of YouTube videos. When I was first learning, learning to knit my pair of socks, YouTube didn't exist back then. And I got a V. This tells you how long ago DVDs weren't around then either. It was a um, a video, you know, like the old VHS. And then I have I have tried looking at it through it with a DVD. Um, I would check out it before you invest in money to go, you know, buy a DVD. Um, either check YouTube. I mean, I'm more of a visual learner, so if I look through books, I do much better if I can watch somebody do it than read about how to do it. So for me, watching YouTube videos was helpful. Um, the other thought, if you want something other than a YouTube video, try going to your public library and check out to see um, if they carry DVDs, because that's where I learned how to do cable stitches and everything else. Like I said, when I began knitting, YouTube didn't exist at that point. So I went to my local library and got videos on how to knit different things and then just kept watching them over and over again. Did anyone knit or crochet for me as a child? My mother is a crocheter. My mom knows how to do garter stitch. She doesn't do like beyond garter stitch. In fact, she's making a scarf right now. She showed it to me the other day um, out of chunky yarn. And uh, But she said it was bothering her hands. Um, because my mother was, my mother was shot in a bank robbery um, 28 years ago. So the joint that is right here in her finger, there is no joint. Her fingers like frozen in place. So her hands are only about 15% strength, and she was shot in the other arm too, in the bank robbery. So anyway, um, yeah, she can only knit for a little bit of time and crochet and stuff because it bothers her hands. But um, Anyway, she re used to, she crocheted me a poncho. I remember I had a brown and gold poncho back in the 70s. Um, and she crocheted like ripple afghans, like the one I'm making. So she made some of those. I remember those on the back of our sofa. Um, my grandmother was a crocheter. I don't remember her making me anything, though. So, um, yeah. But I don't remember anybody being a knitter, really, in my family. What style of knitting do you prefer? I am a, what do you call it, I knit English style. I hold the yarn and I, I actually wrap, I forget what that's called. I'm not a flicker. A flicker is a person that has the yarn coming off this finger and they can knit really, really fast. I'm trying, but I can't do that. And then there's continental knitting where the yarn comes in on the left hand side. It's the most time efficient and I can garter stitch doing continental, but I I haven't mastered it very well uh, beyond garter stitch. So for the most part, I do the you know the wrap, and I'm I'm kind of weird when I hold my yarn. I don't hold it coming off of this finger. I hold it off of this one. This is the finger that actually rotates. I don't know why. It's just more comfortable, and my tension seems to be better. 
Can my patterns be made into crochet? If, if they can, I'm not an advanced enough crocheter to figure out how to do that. <laughs> so I would say probably not because I really don't know how to do cable stitches or anything like that or some of those uh, lacy stitches with crochet. So um, I guess if, if you're good at crochet and you want to try to hack it, you're welcome to, but um, I don't know how to do that. Um, have I knit amaragumi or am, amagurum, amagurumi? No, I have not. For those of you who don't know what amigurumi is, it is, it's a Japanese, I think, if I remember rightly, it's little teeny weeny, I mean teeny, little um, animals and little creatures that are small, and they're done with real tiny needles, um, and like your, the, the yarn that you use for doilies and stuff, that's what you do it with. Um, I've never done it. I think it's interesting, and it looks like it would be fun. But my biggest thing is I don't like things cluttered around me, and I don't know what I'd do with all the little creatures once I finish with them, so that's what's kind of kept me from doing it, because I just don't want the extra stuff around the house. So, um, yeah. My husband laughs because we sit something down too long, it's gone, I pick it up and put it away, and he's my pack rat, and I tend to go through, if I don't use something in six months, other than yarn, it goes away. Um... Do I have any interchangeable needles? If so, what kind? I do not have any interchangeable needles. I have heard so many people talk about how, I mean, they sound like such a good idea because you can change the size of the cables and it gives you a lot of versatility. But I have heard so many people talk about them coming undone while they're knitting or having snags where they, where they uh, lock into place. And I, so I really haven't tried them. I actually have cheap needles that I bought off of eBay. They came in like a set of 11. And to be honest, I absolutely love them. They are, this is one of the sets right here. I like the cables that are on them. The joins here are like super smooth. They're, I'm a metal knitting needle person. I don't, I'm not crazy about wood needles or plastic. I like the metal. And these were like super cheap. I think I got 11 different sizes, and I know it paid under $10 for it. Um, they are Chinese-sized, so you do have to check them um, with a needle gauge to make sure that they are the size that you want them to be. But I really like them. I, I haven't really looked around because I really enjoy the ones I've got. Um, so, yeah. Uh, somebody else asked me how much yarn does it take to knit the hitchhiker scarf? It takes 569 to 574 yards, or if you use meters, it takes between 520 and 525 meters. Um, that is a pattern by Martina Bem, and it is a, it's called a shawl, but it's, and I've showed it before on here because I've knit it numerous times. It's very similar to a more of a neck scarf. It's not a deep like a shawl type. It's only maybe maybe 10 inches to a foot deep. So it's more something you wear around your neck. But um, it's a really fun knit. It's really easy and um, it's it's good. Somebody asked, how do I knit so fast? I don't really knit that fast. I In fact, I was watching Off Our Needles on Craftsy this week and they were timing themselves on how fast they could knit. So I timed myself, and I'm about the same as they are. I, I got roughly around 30, between 32 and 37 stitches per minute. So um, in the vast scheme of things, I'm pretty much an average knitter. Um, I watch people like Nina Phillip. I watch her knit uh, doing socks and stuff. Now she knits, she is a flicker, which means she actually doesn't wrap her finger each then she just basically flicks her finger back and forth and moves it with the needles amazingly fast. So, um, anyway, I don't think I'm a fast knitter. What does superwash mean? A lot of your wools, well, a wool you can't just throw in the wash unless it is superwash. Superwash means it has been treated with a chemical, uh, but that chemical makes it so that you can make it more easy care. So that's what a superwash is. 
Um, what is my favorite item to knit? Shawls. I like shawls. I like sweaters, but I am a large woman, and so for me to make a sweater takes a large amount of yarn. So if I'm going to make something, I'm going to make more of an accessory, although I am knitting a sweater now, but I've got a lot of that yarn um, at a reasonable price. So um, shawls are my favorite thing. Someone else asked me, do I have any beginning knitter tutorials? I do, actually. I have a free pattern on Ravelry for a cow, uh, which is kind of like a oversized turtleneck type of thing that you just slip over your head. It's called the Basic Stitches Cow. It is free, and there are tutorials on the website, on the YouTube channel for that. So, um, yeah, I will put the link to the first one down below. Uh, but there are, I think it's six, six or seven, maybe seven, eight, somewhere between six and eight tutorials. Every single stitch that changes on the on the Basic Stitches Cow, which teaches you basic stitches. I think there's there's one section of yarn overs, there's one section of seed stitch, which is knit and purl. Um, there's a section that teaches you how to do cables. Uh, there's a cast on section, there's a garter section. Um, so a little bit of everything of the basic stitches, which is why I called it a basic stitches cow. And so there are tutorials for each of those stitches. So you come out with a project. When you finish, you're not just learning the stitches, you can make it into something that's useful and it takes you only about a skein of yarn to do it. So, a couple more questions, and then I will move on. How long have I worked at the library? I have been at the library since 2001. Uh, I started there as a page, which means I put the books away. And I actually went to work because I was home with my kids up until next we homeschooled. And I went to work while my son was a senior right before he graduated because at that point we were going to have two kids in college at one time. So I went to work to help supplement the tuition. And so then I worked as a page for six years, and I was trained as a circulation person as well. And then I've been with the Bookmobile for almost 10, be 10 years in July. So let's see, what is a quick knit? Hat, a hat or a scarf is a fairly quick knit. Uh, if you want something, or a cowl, those are all fast knits. What software do I use to edit? I use um, Windows Movie Maker, which is kind of a defunct. You can still get it for free, which is how I ended up with it. Uh, it's very simple to use. It's not supported by the company Windows anymore, but you can download it for free. Um, it's very user friendly, which is why I like it, because I am not a tech person by any means. So um, I looked for the easiest and something free. So. It is Windows Movie Maker. Do I weave? Yes, I do. I have a four harness tabletop loom um, sitting downstairs and I, I don't weave all that often because it takes so long to warp the loom. Um, hours to warp the loom. And so I have not done it, but I do want to use a lot of my worsted weight scraps and just kind of weave something with the leftovers from that. So I am hoping to do that in the near future, but it's just a matter of finding the time to set aside to spend warping the loom. <laughs> um, my loom is, I think, if I remember rightly, it's about 24 inches across. So, um, and it has four harnesses, so I can do several different patterns with it. Um, I got it in an auction. Four harness looms normally will run you three to $400. I got it used at an auction for $40. So, um, and then my husband built a cart because it's too heavy to lift. So he actually built a cart that I can, it's on wheels so I can roll it around and work on it. And the very last question, how do I choose colors for various projects? Basically on what catches my eye. I look at something and it's like, oh, I like this. And then I figure something that will maybe match together. And I figure if it doesn't match together, I can just rip it out and start over again. So, that is the extent of our questions. This is going to be a long podcast this week. Um, next, I want to do a show and tell. Uh, Yoka sent in a couple of pictures for you all to see. One is called the Bactus Shawl. Uh, it's B-A-K-T-U-S. I'll put the name across here. And she, she knitted this from home 
um, homespun yarn, you know, in other words, yarn that she had spun herself. And she said she ran out of it at the end. She was playing yarn chicken and did not win. Uh, and so she actually found she had a Zalber ball, uh, which is a, a my uh, hitchhiker that I knitted was done with Zalber ball. It's a German yarn. And so she has a Zalber ball that actually matched her uh, yarn that she had spun. So she used that for the edging. So I'm going to put that picture in this. And then the pink shawl that she made uh, was made from yarn that she dyed. And she used food coloring and Easter egg dye. And I remember her sending me a picture on one of the other podcasts. I put the picture of the yarn she had dyed. So I think this is that same yarn. Uh, so anyway, she knitted it into a pink shawl. And I will put that picture in. Thank you, Yoka, for sharing pictures. If any of the rest of you have pictures you want to share, you can do so either on Facebook or you can send them to Katrina's Creations at Yahoo.com and I will put them in so all of us can look at them if you don't get Facebook. So now we are on to acquisitions and I've got a bunch of acquisitions this week. First off, I had uh, one of my coworkers, Debbie, knew I was getting into crocheting. And she sent me, she had sent a picture on Instagram and I saw this um, shawl and I looked at it and I was like, well, that's really pretty. It looks like maybe something I can handle. So she sent me the pattern. It is a pattern that is available for free on Ravelry. It's called the Virus Shawl. Um, it just says Instructions by Connie. So this is what it looks like. So it's got these like little peekaboo holes in it. Now, my printer printed it in black and white, but this picture is actually, the light part here is in white and it goes to a pink. So it's really, really pretty. So this might be my next crochet project um, because I think this is something I might be able to handle. I hope. But anyway, we'll see. So I have that. And then I got my knit crate in this week, and I will put a little eye up there. If you want to click on that, you can see the unboxing. But one of the patterns that came with the knit crate, they sent me, um, I get the membership box that I pay for every month, and then knit crate contacted me and offered me a artisan sock crate as well to unbox and show with you all. So this is like different shades. Oh, that's perfect. You can really see it. This is shades of mauve, and there's dark, like, burgundy color speckles in here. And then this yellow, which is not as intense as it's showing up. It's, it's, it's a gold, but it's not like the fluorescent -y color it's looking like. And this is from Got Fiber. It's Twin Mommy Creations. And the color is called Arid Luminescence. It is 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. It is a sock weight yarn. Um, however... You don't have to make socks with this. This is too soft for socks. It's actually really, really soft. But they include a pattern, and this is a picture of the pattern that they included. The kind of lacy socks is called Reliable Spring Socks by Lara Neal. So, um, and they're kind of lacy, and they have a honeycomb kind of pattern here on the uh, heel, on the heel flap. So, um, Got that pattern, and this came in the sock crate. And then in my regular knit crate that I buy each month, I got, um, which is the membership box. And the membership box includes a crochet pattern, a knitting pattern, and two skeins of yarn. So this month it was by Audine Wools, and the color is called Prickly Pear. It's a DK weight, 100% superwash merino wool and that is really true to color so I've got two of those and they are gorgeous they're really really pretty so I like this and the patterns that came with that um, this is the knitting pattern it's called Chloris by Emily Johannes and this reminds me of the hitchhiker because the hitchhiker scarf actually has these like zigzags along in here can see them. So it kind of reminds me of it. So that is the that's the knitting pattern and then the crochet pattern is by Abby Swanson and I really like the crochet pattern. 
and it has kind of a jagged edge you can see here as well so it came in four you could have gotten four different colors one was red one was gold one was green and one was this blue and um, the red one was really pretty too um, there's a podcaster called watch Barbara knit and she got the red and she was giving it away so um, if you want to check out her giveaway yarn giveaway go to watch Barbara knit it's the latest knit crate that she did it's gorgeous red um, one of the other things I got this week because I want to participate in the knit along that I've got running for my pattern uh, for the cowl I bought this is called painted mist it's by knitting fever this is a DK weight but see if I hold it back this way it's got it has a lot of greens in it but it's got kind of rainbowy colors in it too I thought it would go with a lot of spring type of colors there you can see a lot so I don't know if you can see the green yeah there's the green so yeah that's pretty true to color so I got that and then I had ordered I told you a while back that I wanted a new knitting needle storage so the first bunch I'd order a bunch of these plastic like inserts that go in planners I ordered the wrong size my first batch came in they were like two for 99 cents so I ordered seven bunches so I've got 14 of these but I ordered the wrong size these are too small but I'm going to use these for my knitting notions and then the full size which are the five by eights came in today so there's 14 of them and then I got um, some big notebook rings big notebook rings to hook them with um, so that I can store them a little bit better because what I'm using for my needle storage now works but the plastic the needles are poking through it because I've had it for numerous years so that's my new little plan of what to do so that's my acquisitions now we have an upcoming project next week if you would like to participate I'm going to tell you what supplies you're you're going to need I'm going to do a tutorial so let me show you first what it is we're going to make this is a sweatshirt that I cut apart and made into a cardigan and see if I can put this together this one has buttons on it here's the collar and then it has a button band and you can see I've got little buttons on it and then this side has the button holes so there it is this one is crocheted and this pattern that what we're going to do will work for knitting or crochet so you can do it for either and then I made one that is in black so hopefully it'll show up um, and this one does not have buttons on it yeah there you go it has an edge and you can see I've just put the edging here and now this one, this one is knitted so what you will need if you want to make this you will need a sweatshirt I did not know sweatshirts were this hard to find this time of the year but we've like gone from winter to summer it was 80 degrees today we had snow last week and I was wearing a heavy coat on Monday so uh, yeah the weather's a little crazy so you will need a sweatshirt I would recommend you get the sweatshirt at least of one size bigger than what you actually wear because you want it to fit over top of stuff like a cardigan so you're going to need a sweatshirt just the pullover version it doesn't you want it because we're going to cut it we're going to cut it right down the center so you're going to need a sweatshirt you're going to need some worsted weight yarn this was something else I bought today I'm put I'm going to hold mine together and this one has little sequins in it if you can see it yeah there you can see I see the little sparklies I got these at the Dollar Tree who knew the Dollar Tree is now carrying yarn and this is Peyton's so you know and this one is Burnett so I was quite impressed so yeah Dollar Tree I paid a dollar for each of these um, and I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna hold them together and put them with the gray so you will need because um, these are these are baby weight yarns so you will need something in worsted weight yarn you'll need your sweatshirt you will need a darning needle now you want to get a darning needle that 
has a point on the end. It can't be one of the blunt ones. It has to have a, a sharp point. And it has to have an eye that is big enough to get your yarn through. So you'll need one darning needle. And you will need either a crochet hook or a knitting needle. Um, you will, if you're using a knitting needle, you're going to want, or if, yeah, knitting needles, you're going to want between a size 6 to a size 8. Whatever works well with your gauge for worsted weight yarn, you're going to want a US 6 to an 8. I would tend to go towards the 8. Um, and if you're using a crochet hook, you're going to want between an I and a K. So again, whatever works for your gauge, you're going to want something that's going to work with a worsted weight yarn. So that is what we're going to do a tutorial for next week. And of course, now that we're having more weather, nothing's going to need to wear it, but you'll have it ready for next fall. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to make that for next week. So I wanted to give you your supply list ahead of time so you can get a chance to get it before next Saturday. And I did want to share as a last thing, a couple of books with you all. Um, because I'm getting the sock crate through knit crate, um, other options other than socks that you can make with sock weight yarn. So I thought I would share with you a couple. One is called Sock Yarn One Skein Wonders. You can see I've been perusing this book a bit. I've got all kinds of stuff in here. It is edited by Judith Durant. And like I said, it's, it's all sock yarn and it's all stuff you can do with one skein of sock yarn. Then we have there are two books in this series. It's called Sock Yarn Shawls 2. There is a Sock Yarn Shawls 1. This is by Jen Lucas. Um, she's got some gorgeous patterns. I love the one on the cover here. But there are all kinds of shawls in here um, that are really pretty. I'm not going to go through and show them all because we're already almost an hour. So um, it's got some beautiful patterns. And then the last one is Sock Yarn Accessories. And this is also by Jen Lucas. And yeah, it's got scarves. It's got all kinds of things. In fact, here's a little cowl in the front that looks very similar to the one that I made. Uh, so anyway, there's fingerless mitts, all kinds of stuff that you can do with sock weight yarn. So I thought I would share that. If Knit Crate is something that you are interested in, they have offered you a 20% discount on your very first subscription box. The link to it is down below. Um, and I also am going to put the latest Craftsy and Knit Picks sales that are going on also in the connect or the links down below. So if you go to the little description box where it says read more, I think it says show more. If you click the little show more, more it drops down and you can look and just click on those links. It'll take you right to those spots. So that's it for this week. I hope that um, you'll tune in again next Saturday and hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Click the little red button and I will see you again next Saturday. Thanks again for watching. Bye.